Hello class, this is the first video for the calculus course, Cal 3. And so we're going to start off with um, section 11.1. .1. Now I do have slides for um, you all to review. So if you go to your modules page, you will see the page that has the slides and all of the information and theorems and such will be located inside those slides. So I highly recommend that you do read through the slides um, to gather all the information that you'll need in order to complete the homework assignment. Um, if there's anything in the slides that sounds confusing or that you don't um, understand or you can't connect um, with some sort of previous knowledge, um, please make sure that you message me either in Canvas or ACES or you text me using the remind. Um, but you can get a hold of me just to get clarification from the slides, okay? So if you do get stuck on any information that's in the slides, please, please contact me ASAP, okay? Um, in these videos though, following the slides, so first you would watch, you would read through the slides. Um, and then the second thing you would do is watch this video to kind of get an idea of how to work through the homework. However, in these videos where I go through the homework, um, I will be using the concepts and referring to the concepts that are inside the lecture notes, okay? So again, this is going to be after you have read the lecture notes. Otherwise, there's going to be verbiage or examples that, or theorems that I'm going to recall that you're not going to understand or know where they're coming from unless you've viewed those lecture slides. OK, so always, always, always review the lecture slides. At this point in this level of mathematics, you really should know how to read a textbook at this point. And so the lecture slides are kind of a way it's not so convoluted like a textbook. It's a little bit more straightforward, but it is still all in the mathematical language. And um, we really need to be efficient at reading that type of um, print. OK, so Make sure you read the lecture slides. It's just to help practice with all of that reading and mathematical communication, OK? Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue with working on the 11.1 .1 homework, OK? Just so that you have examples of the particular types of problems, OK? So for part for number one, it gives us this vector here in two-dimensional space and asks us to find the component form of vector v. And so for number one, in order for me to find V1 and V2, I essentially need to do X2 minus X1 and Y2 minus Y1. Um, what that means is if I get the coordinates of the um, initial point and terminal point, I'm going to label those, okay? So the initial point is where you start and the coordinates of that point happen to be one comma three. Then the terminal point is where the arrow stops, okay? And so that happens to occur in this example at four, five. So this is going to be labeled, the initial point is going to be labeled x1 and y1, it's the first point of the vector. It's where the vector starts, right? And then the terminal point is where the vector will end, okay? And so that will be labeled x2, y2. So when I come over here to write this in my vector component form, I'm going to take x2 minus x1 and then y2 minus y1. And so if I simplify that, I will get three comma two, okay? So then that's what we're gonna type in here. Now, in order for you to get the vector symbols, you can go to vectors um, and they can pop up here, or you can use your keyboard and next to the M as in monkey or major, any M word, <laughs> but the key next to the M is the comma button but if you hit shift and then that comma button it does open up this um, component form symbol okay but if you don't want to use that you can click on vectors here in the calculus pad and then open up that um, 
vector form. And so then I'm going to type in three comma two. And then if you hit the space outward, it should save that. Um, I just hit a space or you can click this again and it should be able to open up another one if you should need another one. OK, but you do need to close that up. Um, see how it's still grayed out there, even if I hit shift and the period button, which is next to the comma key, um, it doesn't necessarily close it. So, OK, that debunked my whole thing. So make sure that you actually use this vector button. OK, and so in order for me to fin finalize that, I can click away from it and it will close it for me. Now for part B, it says sketch the vector with its initial point at the origin. So if you do have it in the component form, the component form basically already puts the vector into its um, standard position, which is where the initial point is at the origin. And so then this components three comma two are actually equivalent to the terminal point. OK, so essentially what that means is that in the standard position, I would start at the origin, which these three images do. This image does not. And my arrow would be at the coordinates three comma two. So if I scroll over here, it looks like this image is with the terminal points three comma two. And if I submit this answer, it should tell me whether or not um, I was correct. Because it does take some time, and sometimes depending on how many problems I'm submitting, it may take more time. Um, I'm not going to submit every single problem as I go through, OK? Um, I also mentioned in the Web Assigned settings that you can keep coming to these problems and editing them and changing them until you get them correct. Um, but it's harder to keep track of how many attempts you've used on each problem when you do that. So I always suggest that you could just go through the whole assignment, see what you got right, see what you got wrong. And if anything's wrong, correct all the problems you got wrong before you submit the whole assignment again, okay? So I've shown you how to submit an individual question. Now I'm gonna go through the whole rest of the assignment without submitting anything, just waiting till I get to the end and I will submit the whole assignment, okay? So here we are with number two. And so for number two, it says you have initial points for U and V and terminal points for U and B. And it first wants us to um, write them in their component form. OK, so I definitely am going to need the vector button and the vector component symbols. OK, now remember how you label them. These terminal points are the X2 and the Y2. And the initial points are the X1 and the Y1. So instead of having to write this and then I mean, I do still write this step, but I don't necessarily write this down as you keep going, okay? As you learn um, these formulas, less and less of them, you'll actually be writing down. So for instance, if I have the vector U, and it's very important that once you're writing on your paper, especially for a test, if you turn in your paperwork for a test, um, you do wanna use a little arrow up top because you can't really bold print when you're writing on paper, right? So notice that when you're talking about the vectors, they're in bold print. When you're talking about components, components are not going to be in bold print, okay? So I don't need to draw arrows over my components. So I'm going for you, I'm going to take x2, which is five, minus x1, which is four. Then I'm going to take y2, which is six, minus y1, which is four. And so for you, I get the component form of one comma two. Now for V, I'm going to do the same thing. So X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1. And I get 1 comma 2 just the same. So let's type that in. Let's type in our vector symbols, 1 comma 2. Um, and then it says, are U and V equivalent? As long as both of their components are equivalent, then yes, they are equivalent. So remember, I'm going to bypass submitting my answer so that I'm not submitting each individual question as an attempt. I'm just going to submit the whole assignment, and it will use one attempt for every problem. Meanwhile, because I had already submitted number one, that will be the second attempt that is submitted for number one, 
okay, when I submit the whole thing. So number three, we're gonna move on. Number three says vectors U and V whose initial and terminal points are given. Um, same similar thing. So for U, I'm gonna do X2, which is six minus X1, which is two, then Y2 minus Y1. And I end up with four comma negative four. Then for V, I'm gonna do the same thing. So X2 minus X1, and then y2 minus y1. And I get four and negative four, and they are exactly the same thing. So yes, they would be equivalent. But let me type in what I got for my vector forms, my component forms, sorry. So four comma negative four, there we go. And so they are equivalent. If for some reason, even just one of these numbers is different, then you would select no. And surely if both of them are different, then you would select no. Okay, let's move on to number four. So it says the initial and terminal points of the vector are given here. And it wants you to select, sketch the given directed line segment. So you want to sketch it exactly the way it is. So on paper, I'm gonna try to draw, but it's not gonna be the best drawing ever because I'm not using graph paper. So who knows if these marks are evenly spaced out, right? I'm gonna assume each mark is just one unit. So for the initial point two zero, that would be here. And then for the terminal point four two, that would be as if I have an arrow there, okay? And so then I'm going to look for the graph with that image. It looks like it's this one, um, but let's, that's definitely not it. It's starting at zero, zero. And then this one is definitely not it because the terminal point's incorrect. Now this one is in standard form. It's in the standard position, but that was not what they asked us to do. They did not ask us to graph it in standard position. They just asked us to graph the given directed line segment, okay? Um, now they want us to put it in component form. And so for that, you would have to do, um, they're using V. I would have to do X2, which is four, minus X1, which is two, and then Y2, which is two, minus Y1, which is zero. And so I do get the component form of two comma zero. Mm -hmm. um, and then so it says write the function as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors. Remember the standard unit vectors are i, j, and k, i being the standard unit for the x uh, coordinate, J being the standard unit for the Y coordinate and K being the standard unit for the Z component um, if I was in three dimensions, okay? But since we're still dealing with two dimensions, um, this is equivalent to saying two I plus zero J, which can be uh, simplified to just two I. And so when I come here, I wanna type two and then my vectors, I wanna use the I. And notice how it does bold it. It doesn't put the arrow above it because it's not print. It's actually in um, on the computer, okay? So it's typed. And so then now I'm gonna sketch it with the initial point at the origin. Well, remember, once you already have your component form, essentially it will start at the origin and then end at the coordinates that match your component form. So I should start at zero, zero, and it should stop at two, zero. That is two, two. And none of these are correct. Oh, this one is correct. No, none of these are correct. Is there more graphs? Hmm. Oh, it's because I made a typo. I messed up right here. What is two minus zero? Two minus zero is not zero. You probably caught me there, <laughs> but I kept continuing. So, this should not be two zero. This should be two two. I am human. I do make mistakes. If for some reason I do make a mistake and I don't ever correct it, 
um, let me know because I can award you a bonus point toward whatever corresponding test it goes with. So for instance, if you caught me in uh, chapter 11 or 12, then that would add bonus points to your um, unit one test, okay? And so because I do have two for I and two for J, this cannot be simplified any further. And so in here, I do have to add two and then the J component, okay? Um, but if you do let me, if I go through the whole video and I never correct my mistake, let me know, okay? I want to have the correct information out there. And if you've seen as many numbers as I have in a day, you're bound to like start writing down the wrong numbers or making funny computations, okay? So definitely bring it to my attention so I can post a note or comment somewhere letting everyone aware of the error that has happened, okay? Um, I probably won't be able to re-record a whole nother video, but at least I can make an addendum to that video in a statement letting you know that it is incorrect and then post the correction. Okay, so moving on to number five. So for number five, it says, um, sketch the directed segment. So again, we're going to start at zero and negative three. So that's the initial point. And then negative one, two, three, four, and negative one is the arrow. And so it should look something like this on the graph. And so, so far, those two are not it. And this one is not it. It doesn't have the correct terminal point. This one is the correct one. So I'm gonna select it. Now your values will be different. So of course your vectors may look different from mine. I'm just working out with the coordinates that were given to me, okay? Now for part B, we're gonna put that in its component form. So I'm gonna go scroll back up to the values. So if I'm trying to find the vector, I'm going to do the X value of the terminal point minus the initial X value and then the Y value of the terminal point minus the Y value of the initial point. So notice I'm minusing a negative. Here I get negative four and that turns to plus, so I actually get a positive two, okay? So here I am going to enter my component symbols and type in negative four comma two. And if I click out, it'll close the vector for me. Then it wants me to write it as a linear combination. So that would be four. And you cannot use the keyboard. It has to be this button here. And then it's a positive two. So I'm gonna put plus two and then J. Okay, and so then my coordinates should be negative four, two if I start at the origin. That does not start at the origin and negative four, two. So this one looks like it's mine. Um, this one's too high. It looks like a three. And then this one's too low, of course. And this doesn't even start at the origin. Okay, let's see what they have in store for us for number six. I'm going to go ahead and switch over. I'm going to switch over to another paper so that I can get number six. Now here it tells me that V is equal to five and two, and it wants me to find all of these values. So two A, so two times V would actually be two times this vector, which means I'm going to get two times five and two times two. And so what does that look like? It's at the origin, but the terminal point is at 10 and four. So 10 and four should be about right here. So that one is way too long. 10 and four, this one looks right, but let's just go double check. This is in the negatives and this one doesn't go all the way to 10. So it's not correct. Now let's try B. We've got negative three V. So that's negative three times five, two, 
which gives me negative 15 and negative six. So it should be the arrow should be in the third quadrant. The initial point should be at zero, zero. So that's in the first quadrant, first quadrant. Here's one in the third quadrant, negative 15 and negative six. So this one is the correct selection there. Now part C is seven over two V. So we have five and two, oops. We have seven halves times five and two. So here that's 35 over two or and seven, which is about 17.5 um, and seven. Okay, well, it is exactly that. So that should be in quadrant one. Um, and this looks like 17 and about seven. So it might be this one. Let's just go double check the other options. That does not go far enough to 17. This one has got a negative Y value. We do not have a negative Y component. And then that one's way too short. So we are done with part C. Now part D is two thirds V. So I'm gonna take two thirds times five, two, which gives me 10 thirds and four thirds. Now this one I do have to approximate. It's about 3.3 and 1.3, both positive. So it will be in the first quadrant, but this is way too long. Um, this one is also way too long. This has a negative coordinate, which is not the case. And here, this is this is four, so this is about three, and this is two, so about 1.3. So I'm going to select that option. Okay, moving on. We are about halfway done with um, what is gonna be covered in this video, okay? So number seven. Um, oh, it's asking us for a whole bunch of them. So let me write my vectors down. Seven and three, and then four, negative six. And so for part A, I need to do two thirds of U. So that means two thirds times the seven, three. That gives me 14 over three and two. You can type these in a calculator to multiply them if you cannot multiply fractions in your head. Um, I can relatively sometimes, <laughs> um, so I'm going to leave it at that. And so here I'm going to type in my vector component. Come on, there it goes. And then I'm going to write in my fraction for the 14, and I'm going to hit the down arrow, 3. I'm going to hit the right arrow to put my comma and my 2. Now I'm going to move on to part B. It's 3V. So 3 times 4 and negative 6. So I get 12 and negative 18. OK, now for part C, we have V minus U. And so then that means four negative six minus seven three. So what does that mean for us? It means four minus seven and negative six minus three, which is actually negative three and negative nine. So vector components, negative three comma negative nine. Now, finally, part D, we have 2u plus 5v. So that's 2 times 7, 3, plus 5 times 4, negative 6. So in this case, um, that would be 14 and 6 plus 20 and negative 30. Now, do recall your order of operations. They do apply here to vector multiplication and addition. Um, 
And so when we're doing this, we have to actually do the multiplication first, and then we can do the addition. So those two components add together is 34, and these two components added together is negative 24. And so that is my resultant vector. Okay, number eight is asking me for the magnitude of 6i in component form. That is 6, and since there's no j component, it's 0. And if I want to find the magnitude of this vector, what I need to do is the square root of the first component squared plus the second component squared. So I actually end up with the square root of 36, which is just 6. This one came out to be a nice number. Sometimes they're not. They're still irrational. Number nine, it did give it to me in component form already. So I can go ahead and jump straight to the magnitude formula, which would mean 5 squared plus 12 squared. So that's 25 plus 144, which I believe is 169. And the square root of 169 is 13. Again, a nice number. They're not always nice numbers, but we're getting kind of lucky here. Okay, here we go. Number 10, you can still fit the number 10 in here. Um, so for number 10, we have V equals 7i plus 7j in component form that's 7 comma 7. And so if I want to find the magnitude of V, that means the square root of 7 squared plus 7 squared, which is the square root of um, 98. And if you have a calculator, the calculator that was recommended, you can simplify square roots in this calculator. As long as the numbers inside the radical are not too large, it should simplify for you. Otherwise, you have to simplify it by hand, which would make you recall um, all of the information that you know of radicals. Okay, number 11. So number 11 is negative 6.1i plus 2.9j. In component form, that's negative 6.1 comma 2.9. So if I want to know the magnitude, oh no, this one says something totally different. This one says find the unit vector in the direction of u. Well, we know that unit vectors are found by taking the directional vector divided by its magnitude. That way, the length is now shrunk down to one, which is the definition of a unit vector, right? A unit vector can be in any direction, but the length of it will only be one, okay, one unit. So if I take this vector and I divide it by its magnitude, it will have the same direction, but the length of that resulting vector will be just one unit, which makes it a unit vector in the direction of V. So I'm going to take this vector and I'm going to divide it by the magnitude of that vector. And so I'm not sure what decimal I'm going to get here. So negative 6.1 squared plus parentheses 2.9 squared, I get 45. 0.62, and I don't know that that simplifies any. Um, nope, not necessarily. Nope, it does not simplify. So I am not sure if it will accept what kind of form it wants, because it may be pretty um, 
It may want the exact answer. It may want a decimal answer. I'm not sure. But whenever, you, and then there's more formal ways to write it. You can't have decimals in the downstairs of a radical. I mean, you could rationalize it. There's all kinds of ways to write the final answer. So I'm going to leave it at negative 6.1 over the square root of 45.62 and 2.9 over the square root of 45.62. If I try to type these individually in my calculator, fraction is if the decimal is an ongoing decimal and the computer did not tell me to round, you don't want to type that in. It'll count it wrong, okay? So since it's not telling me to round to anything, I cannot use this decimal representation. I do have to use the fraction representation. There are two problems with this fraction. You're not supposed to have decimals in a fraction. And then on top of that, you're not supposed to have radicals in the denominator. But when you get this high up into uh, the level of mathematics, they may not be so picky on how they want the answers. So I'm going to try. I'll find out when I submit the whole thing on whether or not this form was not accepted or not. OK, but I'm going to try it at first and see what what it tells me. Maybe it'll take it and I don't have to do any more work with it. Or maybe it wants me to manipulate that to make it look more formal. I am not sure. It's been a while since I've um, gone in here and done each individual assignment. I did them when I created it, but it's been a while. Um, just because I'm curious about this one particular question, I am going to submit it right away. I don't want to move on and then have to come back later to try to explain what's going on. So let's go see how it marked number 11. Oh, see, it did accept it. So yeah, you didn't have to mess with it at all. You just left it like that. Perfect. Okay, moving on. Number 12, we've got u equal to zero, one, and we've got v equal to four, negative two. Now be very careful that when you are talking about vectors that you do use these sharper parentheses looking things and not a regular parentheses because regular parentheses symbolize points. These symbols um, symbolize vectors, okay? And so there's a drastic difference between a dot and a whole like directed segment, right? So make sure you're using the correct notation. Um, so for part A, it's asking me for the magnitude of u. So that's the square root of the first component and the square of the second component sum together. So I get the square root of one, which is just one. Now we're going to find the magnitude of v, which is the square root of four squared plus negative two squared, which is the square root of 20, which is two square root of five. So two square root of five. Again, if you're not sure you can type the whole thing in the calculator. Four squared plus negative two squared. And the cool thing about this calculator is it should look exactly the way it looks on your paper. And when you hit enter, it just skips this and it just goes straight to that. I did it in my head, so I had to do this first and then I could do that. So now it wants me to find the magnitude of u plus v. Well, in order for me to find the magnitude, I'm gonna have to go ahead and figure out what u plus v is first. So I'm going to do 0, 1, plus 4, negative 2, which is 4 and negative 1. And then if I find the magnitude of that, I get 4 squared plus negative 1 squared. So that's the square root of um, 17. And that cannot be simplified any further. If I try to do it in here, oh look, I'm gonna cheat and copy that and just change that to a negative one and it doesn't simplify past square root 17. Okay, here, there we go. We're getting to some crazy ones. So for part 
um, D, it wants us to do U over the magnitude of U and then take the magnitude of that. So I already know what U and the magnitude of U are. So U is zero, one, and the magnitude of U is one. So if I divide zero by one, I still get zero and one divided by one is still one. And then when I take the magnitude of this new vector, not really new, it looks exactly like U, right? Um, you get the square root of one, which is one. So for part D, the answer would still be one. Now for E, I'm pretty sure the answer is gonna be one again. It's just gonna look differently as we go through. Because remember the definition of a unit vector. You take a vector divided by its magnitude, you'll get a unit vector. And what is a unit vector? A unit vector is a vector that has a length of one. What is magnitude? Magnitude is the length of the vector. So if I already know I'm gonna have a unit vector, then I already know that the length is one unit, okay? So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be one and this is gonna be one, but I want you to work out the mechanics just so that you get practice with all of that. So I'm gonna, completely finish this problem. Um, so V itself is four negative two. And then the magnitude of V we have already figured out, it was two square root of five. So if I were to um, simplify this, it would reduce by two. So I'd get two over the square root of five. This would also reduce by two, leave me with negative one over the square root of five. And then if I find the magnitude of that, I get two over the square root of five squared plus negative one over the square root of five squared, which would give me four fifths plus one fifth, which would be five fifths. So the square root of one, which is one. Again, if you don't trust me <laughs> and you can't do the math in your head, do the square root parentheses fraction two downstairs square root of five, go to the side, close it, square it. Thus, open the parentheses, fraction, negative one, downstairs, square root of five, go to the side, go to the side, close it, square it. So what's on my paper, oops, it's not letting me square inside there. Oh, I ran out of too many things. Okay, it's too many buttons in order for my calculator to register. So let's do it in pieces. So we get two fraction square root of five, close that and square it. I get four fifths. Then negative one square root of five squared, I get one fifth. Four fifths and one fifth makes five fifths and five divided by five is one, okay? Which is where this one came from. Okay, moving on to part F. Again, this is a unit vector by definition, but I'm going to do the mechanics of it. So UV was already done. Um, when I added them together at four and negative one, and then when I took the magnitude of it, I did get the square root of 17. So this is four over square root of 17 plus, or no, I'm sorry, not plus, comma, negative one over the square root of 17. And if I wanna take the magnitude of that, I have to do the square root of four over square root of 17 squared plus negative one over the square root of 17 squared which is going to be four squared, 16, square root of 17 squared, 17. Negative one squared is one, and square root of 17 squared is 17. So this gives me 17 over 17, which is the square root of one, which is in fact one, okay? So we do still get those same values there. Now, 13 and 14, you watch the video here, and then after you've watched the video, it will contain the information you need to answer the true or false question down below. Um, same thing with number 14, watch the video and then you'll be able to answer this true or false question. I don't wanna go through it because I don't wanna give you those answers. I want you to watch the video and then decide the solutions yourself, okay? But 
the rest of the um, homework you do have some guidance for as you navigate through that. Um, these videos will become a lot more helpful as the problems get um, develop into more complex situations. Okay. But other than that, we are done with 11.1.